Ladies and gentlemen, another Facebook Live today on this glorious Thursday. Okay, what is today, the 8th? Henry the 8th. No, April the 8th. On uh, 2021, in an unbelievable, crazy, ballistic, awesomeness, real estate market. Put your seatbelt on. It's just begun. I know a lot of people think this is the, uh, what do they call it? The um, They think this is the peak. I'm like, no, it's not the peak. It's not even a bubble. Bubble gum, maybe, but not bubble. It's a, it's an incredible, healthy, wholesome market. And today we have a treat. Okay, we have from the lovely state of California, where they have a governor today, but he might, maybe you might not, right? <laughs> yeah, get right. <laughs> okay, and the great thing about Ryan, his name's Ryan Lara, by the way. Ryan, yes. Thank you. Thank you. That's the studio audience for it goes crazy for you, Ryan. You can't see them, but they're here. Oh, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> And the great thing about you is that you were a real estate agent. As a matter of fact, I remember you getting your award, giving you a high five last year at the Nixon Library. Remember that? That was cool. Yeah, I do remember that. That was beautiful. Very, very well put together. Awesome awards event. From what wasn't it? Yeah, it's great. Uh, Mark and uh, Gordon do a great job. Okay, uh, and you know what the thing is is that um, um, the great thing about you is that you were a top producing agent, and now yeah. you actually take the trek every day to go out to that lovely which I consider one of the best locations that we have. It's like the Rodeo Drive, okay, yeah. of Palm Springs, of Palm Desert, actually. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, Ryan Lara. Oh, we already did that, but let's do it again. Oh, thank yeah. You. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you know, I, I had some back and forth with a manager from a separate company over at, he was from Beverly Hills over on Rodeo Drive, and I said, hey, you're like the El Paseo of LA County. Right, exactly. <laughs> no, I like that even better. I remember the first time I went to that office, um, I parked the car and just walked up and down, walked down the street, crossed the street, walked back. I'm like, this is incredibly awesome. You must have some decent walking traffic there, right? Oh, totally. We do. We definitely do. We have, you know, we have we have our properties up on the front window, and uh, we definitely get a lot of, you know, walk-ins and people, and and also call-ins too. It's a very it's a very prestigious address in in, in the Coachella Valley, and it's very sought after. Um, a lot of our agents like to just bring their bring their clientele to El Paseo. It's a it's a big deal to them, and. Uh, I, I get it. It's a it's a nice locale. So God bless. <laughs> great locale. It is a great locale. Okay, so awesome. So let's get right into it, man. Let's yeah. put your, put your real estate agent cap on for a momento. And and you were in my coaching too, which is great. We had a great yeah. time. One on one yeah. coaching with me. So tell us a little about how you did your business. Maybe a little about your production level, especially the last yeah. full year, and why someone like you would go from production into management. Okay, so let's talk about the first part. Yeah. Tell us about your yeah, business. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so so uh, a little background first. So I'm a second generation uh, real estate agent. My mother was an agent, so I grew up in grew up in the business. Um, my my fondest memories of childhood were I was the the, the little the, the kid lugging the open house signs and and sitting in the corner during listing appointments on my Game Boy. Uh, however, there's a lot of uh, a lot of things you just digest from osmosis, uh, from being in that in that you know being around that. Um, you know, even being a teenager, I remember writing, uh, writing, helping my mother write offers on triplicate. Uh, so, so I, you know, it, it may seem young, but it, in a way, I'm, I'm not <laughs> because I have uh -huh. a, that osmosis in me. Um, so, uh, went to UC Riverside, uh, got my bachelor's degree in history, decided, uh, went into my, with the idea of going into education. Uh, it was kind of odd, just didn't feel like the right fit. So, went to back to what I knew, which was real estate. Uh, first full year in real estate did 17 deals. Just kind of already knew what I was doing and just kind of just jumped through. And that was a uh, that was with Berkshire Hathaway Home Services over in Redlands. And uh, decided to you know I like the I like obviously I love working with uh, you know clients and my past clients sphere of influence sphere of influence and friends. But uh, ultimately decided uh, more of the you know manage, managerial corporate route was what I liked. So I actually was tapped to be the manager over at the Berkshire Hathaway office in Riverside. And then uh, ultimately now that my my road has led me to Rancho Cucamonga, and now here I'm managing in Palm Desert, so it's fantastic. I love it. That's awesome. That's awesome. You know, it's funny because I did 17 deals my first year too. Isn't that crazy? I remember the I remember the first time you were uh, you were at the conference room in Rancho, and I heard you speak for the first time. And you said 17. And I'm like, hey, he took my <laughs> he took my story. <laughs> 17. <That's me>. You know, <laughs> the thing is, is that when I did it, you no, know, in two in 19. What was it, 1986 or seven? Um, I was rookie of the year on my board, which is kind of crazy if you think about That's awesome. it. That's awesome. 17 transactions. Yeah, no, but it was, um, um, so I mean, now 
you know, we have agents doing 25 deals their first year. It's pretty incredible if you can do that many, but 17 is, if you can start out your business in your first year doing over a deal a month average, that's incredibly good. Totally, so, totally. Yeah, and I know, so your last full year though, where did you finish? You were like in the top 20, weren't you? Or something like that. I can't remember exactly. Yeah, it was, it was something like that. Um, I don't remember exactly. I was I was already starting to, once the once opportunity to manage <laughs> popped up, I was like, all right, numbers are out. I really wanted to get back into managing. Managing That's what I really enjoyed. So that's what I what I was really focusing on. Um, but I remember I, we're doing, you know, I was I was working on a team in Rancho Cucamonga. We're doing great there. It was, I think, I think we we're cranking out, you know, we we're doing, you know, two or three deals a month. So we were, we were, going pretty strong mm -hmm. yeah and, and i know that you did you did listings too you did you know you you did yeah. the present you use the company tools you did all of that stuff too so totally. it's easy when that office totally. came, you know when vicky, and, reti it was vicky retired right yeah she well she i believe she's over at indian wells now um she she's she's over that way um and and so yeah so then the opportunity arose to to manage in palm desert and um you know i was a little at first, I was a little apprehensive just because of of the low. You know, it, it's a it was a new frontier for me, so to speak. But but ultimately, when it all when it was all said and done, it it, it worked out. It was great. I I really enjoyed. Um, you know, I, I really enjoy it. I love I love the desert. I love the. It's a it's a totally different vibe. And it's resort living. It's a it's a more you know laid back atmosphere, which you know kind of goes with my. I think it goes with a little bit with my personality. So uh, it just it was just the right fit. Worked perfectly. That's great. That's great. And probably. I would imagine the, uh, and I remember, you know, it's funny you said with your mother, the three call, I remember writing offers on um, my state where I come from, state of New Hampshire, the claim to fame up until just, I think 10 years ago, one page contract, one page, wow. solicitor, one page, our state logo is live free or die. It's on every license. <laughs> People freak yeah, out when I yeah. that's the truth about, anyway, so um, I remember those carbons and you had to press hard and. So you've yeah. been you've been doing this a while. You've been doing if you've been helping your mother, and you remember those days. Yeah, yeah, totally. It was you know it, it, I remember my mother always kind of kind of you know, just, just again this is these are things you get by osmosis. You know she did some deals that were you know very lucrative, and she did some deals that you know were so so, and she treated everyone equally. She treated the you know, from the you know a million dollar clients to the ones who you know were were more in the mid range or lower range you know price range. She treated everyone, gave to everyone top tier service and. Um, she was with Prudential um, back in the day, so I it just kind of it just it just I always remember that it just kind of stuck with me that you you always have to treat everyone with respect regardless of their price point and you just give you just give top tier service regardless and I think that really ties into what our brand represents. I think we are the best brand in real estate. I believe that wholeheartedly, and um, I think that 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 service level really ties into what we do. Yeah, I totally agree. We are you know I call it uh, when Uncle Warren never met the man, but I still call him Uncle Warren. <laughs> when Uncle Warren bought um you know prudential you know your mother yeah. worked for it, turned it into berkshire hathaway home services even pete rose not pete rose uh johnny bench wow pete rose used to live in the building that i lived in when i first moved here though i was just seeing him in the elevator all the time he's funny actually um and, and you know um when uh, when i saw the convention in two it was four years ago now in phoenix and even phoenix. John said, when warren buffett bought prudential and turned it into berkshire hathaway home services his exact line was, as a consumer, that's all I needed to know. I was like, isn't that an interesting line? And I thought, yeah. it, and it's so true. And then we have, and I know we're both company guys. We're employees. And I always give the agents a hard time. We listen better because we're employees. You're independent contractors. <laughs> <laughs> 1099, 1099. I don't have to listen to you, Rick. Just kidding. That's right. That's right. Yeah. No, that's the way the agents are. You want me to what? Yeah, that's pretty funny. No, I want you to work. I know it's a four-letter word, but. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, my point is, is that the company, I think about when I started in the business and my tool was a one through 31 accordion file. And now we have this unbelievable VAC 2.0 with all the bells and whistles and reports. Ah, it's ridiculously crazy. So if oh. they actually use the tools, they take the direction and use the tools. We by far have the best program and brand on, in the, on the planet, I think. Totally. I, I completely agree. And and I'll, I'll even go a step further. You know, I've had the perspective of working, um, you know, working within the Berkshire Hathaway brand and at different companies and, and just the, the VAC is just, just top tier. And it's it's it gives so many tools and it's a one stop shop. It's the first thing agents should go log into in the morning. Um, it just because from, from there you can go every, anywhere. 
you can, you can go to you know your your contracts. You can go to your transaction management tools. You can go at anywhere you need to. Uh, your CRMs there, your calendars there, all your marketing resource, all marketing stuffs there. Um, it's just it's just such a top tier, uh, you know, top of the line uh, tool. And so, from from my perspective as a as a manager, you know, overseeing my off my roster is sixty three agents. Uh, I, I I really instill in, in them that hey, you have the keys to the kingdom. You already got the keys to the Lamborghini. You just have to drive now. You just have to fill it up with gas and go. Yeah, you know, and, you know, the perfect example is Heather. Heather in your office, right? Used to be the office administrator. Now mm -hmm. with COVID, you know, she was uh, put on pause. That's a good way of saying, you know. Um, but anyway, and then immediately came out of the gate doing business. All right, you know, jumped into my coaching, uses the system, dud real, and then when she was offered the job back, was like, no, nah, I'm doing pretty good in real estate, and now she's doing even better than pretty good. So it's it's totally. it, you know, it's interesting how some of the new people come in. Like the, one of the gentlemen that I'm going to interview next week, and they take the direction and use the stuff, and they get into it. Sometimes it's those crafty veterans that takes a little while to convert them onto the new stuff, right? Totally. Well, I think I think what happens is with with certain when once you get to a certain uh, you know chapter in your real estate career, it's, it's you know certain habits become part of your DNA, and it's hard to break those habits. Um, but when you're newer, you're more willing to make mistakes, more willing to. Uh, run before you walk in some ways, and I find those agents to just be, you know, you be be successful. And and I'll I will tell those new agents, you know, they're they're, you know, make make mistakes. It's okay. You like not everything's gonna be perfect, one hundred percent all the time, and that's just life, and that's real estate. But they're I find the the newer agents are more willing to just kind of run and go. Um, the older, you know, the more seasoned veterans, um, you know, they 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 by they have their book of business. They've gone to the They've gone to the tier and stature of you know in the in the real estate world for for some reason, so they're doing something right. But the for me as a manager, it's more so about hey, you need to incorporate these tools because you may be letting some you know sand fall through your hands in regards to deals, and and even more so if if you all these tools you know if they can take up your business five ten percent on a year to year basis, God bless, like that's all you really want, that's all you really need, and that's um and by the way, you can do a lot more than that. But if if you can just get it to do that. Um, the tools more than pay for themselves and, and they're just fantastic. Gotcha. Yeah. You know, it's so true that they, they're, it's such a, um, if you, if you just, you know, you, you're right, you get in, you get in these, um, if you, if you can rely only on your sphere, it's great and it's bad at the same time. Yeah. You know, yeah. When I, you know, like, like, like with you, your mother doing it, when I see sometimes, um, agents been doing it for years and then a child, a daughter or a son comes in. With a new with a new look, all of a sudden, their business catapults because they've got that consistent going uh, sphere going on. And then they add a new twist to it, and kaboom, it takes off even further. So this business is so started. awesome because it can you can you can do it any you can take your personality, take a look at the way you can do it, and design how you want to do it yourself. Correct? Agreed completely. I, I think that you know I, I'm a big believer in. A, you need to, you know, you, you need to find what works for you. If you're, if you're the open house queen, then double down on that. And you're good at that, you know, you know, focus on that. Um, but I also think that there's something to be said for diversification with your lead generation. And so when, when let's say, let's say, for example, if you were like the door knocking farm person and then COVID happened, you know, er, you know, you know, things, you know, you got thrown for a loop a little bit in the last year. However, if you have some, you know, other pillars of lead generation that are just, you know, the T's are crossed, the I's are dotted and they're, and it's a good funnel, but you know, those kind of things are, are really going to help when, you know, some funnel, some, some faucets are going to be, you know, blowing out water and some won't be. So you just need to be a, you need to dive. I think you need to diversify to some degree. Yes. I was just thinking while you were talking, yeah, the people, and we've had a couple agents uh, slapped on the wrist for getting out there door knocking a little too early. I appreciate in California, <laughs> I appreciate your enthusiasm, but you're right. You can't really do it yet, but in Nevada and Arizona, you can, you know, you guys are under stricter rule there in lovely California. <laughs> <laughs> apparently, apparently, California, we have a June fifteenth target for reopening. So that's what uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what ultimately comes from that. But um, I mean, I know, I know, a lot of our agents are antsy for open houses and door knocking and and you know all that stuff. When you say June fifteenth, you you mean twenty twenty one, right? Is that what you? <laughs> <laughs> twenty thirty one. Twenty thirty one. Uh, yeah, I know. What a crazy. Uh, I, you know, I used to have a saying, I would say, unless something crazy happens. And I said that yeah. up until the pandemic happened. Now I say, unless a meteor hits the planet, which I hope I'm not jinxing us, yeah. but 
Yeah. <laughs> At this rate. <laughs> yeah, right. Speak about crazy times in the market. Let's get into that for a second. Then I have a couple of really good questions I want to ask you. You know, have you ever seen anything like this before, Ryan? Uh, you know, it feels like I, I feel like I, I get asked that every, every like six months <laughs> and I say no. And it updates, <laughs> right? Yeah, it changes. It's always it's always fluctuating. It's a meandering river and it's a it's a it's a unique situation always. And and when I just see where inventory levels are so, you know, razor razor thin and I also see demand from buyers being so high and that's being obviously, you know, pen, you know, held up by low interest rates historically. Oh, my goodness. By the way, buyers, your deal right now is your interest rate. That is your deal. Uh, not your don't pay attention to the price. Pay attention to the, the, the interest rate you're getting because you'll thank yourself in five years for that fantastic interest rate. That's what's really good. What's really Very good. Down. Very good advice. Yeah, I know. I know. I keep saying I've had a lot of firsts in the last twelve months in real estate. I hadn't said a first in a long time because I've been doing mm -hmm. this for thirty six years. In the last year, I've had at least five or six of them. And one of them is like yes, like Tuesday, I introduced I uh, interviewed Sandy Gar. Been in the business for six months. Already has seven closings, four pendings. You probably saw, and she lost out on a one point five million dollar. Um, the, the listing was on the market for one point five. Her buyers offered one point six and change, and the house went to one point seven five. Two hundred and fifty thousand over asking. That's seventeen percent cash. Wow. Now, so so for all you all you dooms people out there. All you uh, people that love the doom, okay, and are saying things like this, oh, this is just like 2007. No, it is not because this is a healthy market. People are paying cash. They're buying the places. They're moving in. It's not the fourth house they own. No income verification, down payment not verified. It's not that that market was total greed and escalation. This is healthy, wholesome, arm's length, day-to-day, -to -day, totally different, and it's even crazier from an appreciation factor too, right? Agreed. No, completely. And I think, and I think one key takeaway with whenever I get the, you know, people, people immediately want to compare to the, you know, the last housing crisis in 2007 to, you know, 2008. Um, and, and first and foremost, when uh, back in 2020, when I went to, uh, when I went over to, um, excuse me, uh, uh, what was it? Uh, it was, where was it? Tom Ferry Summit. It was Tom Ferry Summit in Anaheim. Uh, I was there and, uh, they were talking about what's going to be the next, you know, you know, global economic crisis. Or what are we going to deal with? And the number one, you know, when, when they asked all these economic experts what they think it was going to be, the number one thing was going to be a geopolitical event. And I think COVID probably, you know, su su suffices that prediction, uh, su suffices for that prediction. But real a real estate housing crisis was like seven or eight on their list. And I think the biggest key to that is, uh, you know, homeowners have never had this much equity in their homes. The, you, you know, we have so much equity in all of our, our homes at the moment. Um, they're skin in the game. In 2000, 2008, there were stated income loans. People, you know, barely had any, you know, equity in their pro in their home, so they were, you know, quick to let it go, and, and that kind of just snowballed into the crisis that you know that occurred. Yeah, totally agree. Um, it's a it's a totally different scenario, uh, and you know, let's face it, this is um, a pretty incredible market, and it's going to continue. Yeah. And now you're going to see the people that aren't afraid, especially in your state, that aren't afraid of COVID or less afraid, I should say, because it was a pretty bad situation. Uh, you're gonna see them come on. You've got a lot of people talking about, you know, the tax situation and the changes in California and especially LA County, the, the you know, the Bay Area, San Diego. If they just won't leave the state, they're going to you. They're going to the desert. Okay, yeah. if they will leave the state, they're coming to Arizona and Nevada. So either way, it's good. Plus you guys, especially like Orange County, uh, they could definitely use the inventory. So you guys- Agreed. But but that is starting to pick up too, you know. Yeah, I, I, I completely agree with that. I, I also, you know, I'll, I'll counter a little bit with with you know, for every you know, we do you, you hear the hubbub of oh, people want to leave California and it makes headlines or and everything else. But you know, for every listing we have that someone who wants to leave California, there's you know eight nine offers of people who want to move into that same house. So there's still high desirability here, you know, by far. I I would also add that you know with with the way the the housing housing market is trending, I I'm. I'm really hoping for more inventory, especially maybe hopefully May, June with the vaccine rollout. Just and that really just comes down to consumer confidence. Back back in March of 2020, you know, right before the the lockdowns and and you know, I, I, to me, I remember the, the the flashpoint to me when I knew things got serious. I'm a big sports fan, and I was watching a random NBA game, and they just stopped the game, and they said, "Fan, you know, please please exit." Very like ominous tone from the PA announcer, and that just kind of gave me goosebumps. 
But I remember, th you know, I had like two or three listings coming up. I was, I was rocking. I was going, had photos scheduled, had all this stuff happening. And then all of a sudden it was like, er, like you said, breaks earlier that that's, you know, consumer confidence is everyone freaked out. No one knew this at that time in March, no one knew how bad this was going to be. No one knew if, you know, was this the end of society or was it going to be like two weeks to flatten the curve? No one, no one knew what was the, what was the in between, but but now I, with this vaccine rollout, I'm really hoping consumer confidence is up. We see more listings. And to be frank, I would be, I would be okay if, if prices just kind of like chilled out for a second instead of these crazy spikes we're seeing at the moment. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually could live with that with the stock market too because I'm afraid, you know, if you have your retirement fund in there, you're afraid all of a sudden one day. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, my I mean, Berkshire Hathaway stock's fantastic. What are you talking yeah. about? <laughs> I, I have B stock too. B. I wish B, I had B, A. B. I wish I had A. <laughs> We're in the same boat. <laughs> yeah. No, I started that right when I came. Um, actually, it was my uh, wife that talked me into it. She's like, you should, you know, I'm like, what a great idea. I, I don't know why I didn't think of it. So I've been slowly accumulating B stock myself, which is great. It's definitely um, doing some good stuff, especially with Uncle Warren at the helm. And I'm sure even yeah. when... Even when we don't have Uncle Warren, it's set up really good. Everything I read about him is pretty incredible. And here's the other great thing too, because I'm, and I really like this one because I'm 56 now, 99% of his wealth he accumulated after 50. I don't know if you knew That's that. That's awesome. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah, the well, first time you, I heard Warren Buffett- like financial, oh, go ahead. He's, he was, his, I, I heard, do you know, have you heard about the sage from Omaha? You ever hear that term? He used to be called <laughs> yeah. that. When he was like first discovered as his, you know, 70 year overnight, uh, Guru. You know, station. Right. Exactly. Go ahead. I interrupted you too. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I was one of the, one of the big things I've, I've, I, I kind of internalized financial, you know, with in regards to financials is um, anyone who follows Dave Ramsey, who's also a big financial, financial expert, you know, he, when he cites studies of, you know, millionaires, people who created their money and, and, um, you, and you look, look at Warren in this example as well. A lot of these, you know, I think, I think one of the studies he cites 80, 90% of millionaires, um, weren't born millionaires. They've created yeah. their wealth. They've worked hard and, and, and done it, you know, the hard way. And Warren's definitely, you know, there's that. And there's, and to all of our, you know, real estate professionals watching this, like it's doable. It's completely possible. And, and don't think you have to inherit wealth to, to have it. You can totally work hard and get to, you know, get to that stature. Yeah. When you, um, I was going to say something bad. I shouldn't, but when, <laughs> when, when you earn it yourself, you learn a lot in the process. Agreed. People that are given it usually end up having problems. And there's a famous one right now that is, I'm not going to mention the name, but you all know who that is. I was, <laughs> I was going to say, and I think if I did, people would think it's political, which it's not. But it's true. When people are given the money, they end up totally mm -hmm. different than when they earn it. Because the process right. to even become a millionaire today, even though it's never been easier in the history of mankind, um, you still learn a lot along the way. Mm -hmm. And you know, the old, you know, I love the, the example Matthew Ferry used to give uh, is a, buff, a butterfly going through the cocoon. Like if without the squishing and working and struggling process to drain the wings and go through the cocoon, like if you slid it forward and let it out, it would die. It has to go through that struggle process to drain and become ready to fly off as a butterfly. And if you don't go through the struggle, you don't respect it. You know, I remember the first time I listened to uh, Wayne Dyer. Uh, he said, do not rob your children of the opportunity to struggle in life. Yeah. That's, such a, that's such a great way to look at it. All right, let's get into this, man. Okay, so now you're a rock star manager in, like I said, probably the best location. Don't tell the other managers. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so tell them your top three things. As an agent and now as a manager, that people need to consider if they really want to maximize this existence called real estate. So, so first and foremost, you, and, and this is going to sound super cliche, but you have to put the work in, you need to, this is not some get, uh, get rich quick thing. Uh, you know, when you, I see some agents who are, you know, middling and they want to put in, you know, 20 hours a week or 15 hours a week. And they think that's going to be, a, you know, that, that, that's going to make money fall from the sky. That's not it. So you need to, you need to put the work in, you need to put, you know, 40 plus hours a week at least to really become a high level, high, you know, top tier, top producer agent. You need to you need to put that work in, and so when and and, and I'll maintain this, and I've yet to see it. You know, I've yet to see it, an agent who works hard and fails. The ones right. who work hard will figure it out. Like you, 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 you may spin your wheels a little, you know, spin your head a little bit, but you're you're going to figure it out, and you're going to be successful with it. So, so, so keep going. Don't and, and so work hard. That's number one. 
Number two, I'd say don't be afraid to fail. You need to be okay with tripping and falling every so often. Um, the, the agents who get stagnant and want to just, oh, this is, you know, I'm stuck in my ways and this is how it's, this, I've done it like this for, for, for 10, 15 years and I'm going to keep doing it this way. Like you need to be adaptable. And, and that just doesn't, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll be a little macro on this. That's not even real estate. That's just life. The, the, yeah. Any, any per career and profession, you, the, the agents who will adapt and change the, the teachers who adapt and change the lawyers who adapt and change the, whoever it may be. Those are the ones who are successful and the ones who, um, you know, doing real estate in 2021 is different than you doing it in 2000, 2010, even, um, you need to, you need to be adaptable. So work hard, be adaptable. And I think another thing too is, um, be present. And, and so that was a key takeaway for me from, I went to the Brian Buffini, uh, it was like a mastermind conference over in uh, San Jose a few years back. And when you need to be present, that, that really goes into work-life balance. I see agents going these crazy runs where they're working 40, 50 days a week. Um, I'm very unconventional as a manager. When I will ask my agents, what's your day off this week? You need to take time for yourself. You need to make sure you recharge your batteries and you need to make sure when, when you're on, you're on and you're working hard. And when you're not, you know, you need to take time to, to recharge. And, um, you know, how many times do we, um, are we at dinner with, you know, with someone and, you know, our phones are going off like crazy and, and, you know, we, we're sacrificing, you know, our relationship with the person right across the table from us to answer the phone and we feel obligated to and everything else. Yeah, we need to give our clients top tier service, of course, but we also need to be present for life. Why are we working so hard to have a great life and to, you know, enjoy, enjoy ourselves, go on, you know, and have a nice home, go on a good vacation, enjoy our relationships with our family and friends. So there's a time for work and there's a time to relax and play. And don't forget that. I love it. Yeah, you know, you got to compartmentalize your time, time block it, have a detailed schedule, whatever you want to call it. You know, it's funny because I was listening to um, an, another book this morning, as I always do. I can't even think of the mm. name of this one. Oh, can't think of the name of it. I get so lost in the, because I go one after <laughs> another. But uh, he said that, and I've heard this said before too, that the 4% of people that have a schedule, have their goals written down, are detailed. Like they take graduating class after graduating class. The 4% that do that and focus on that and maintain that, I'll perform the other 96% times 100. <laughs> it's kind of crazy Agreed. if you think about Agreed. it. So I totally agree. I agree with you. Work. That's your first one. Do the work. Don't be afraid to fail. As a matter of fact, a lot of these big corporations, Google and Apple, if you don't fail, they give a certain amount of time to, for them to think up new stuff. And if you're not failing at stuff, they don't even think you're working. You're, you're going to be in trouble. Yeah. If you don't make mistakes, you're not trying. Who was it? Right. Also, the woman that invented Spanx, Sarah Blakely, she said, one of the best things my father ever did for me is every night at dinner, he would say, how did you fail today? Isn't that a great question? How did like you fail? That. Right? Because you're growing. You're demonstrating growth. If you're not making mistakes, and I, let me tell you something. My first five years in the business, I was a, I had an A plus at failure. I tried everything. And I, I was 19, so I already knew everything. You couldn't teach me. So I had to learn. <laughs> the hard way you know anybody have a 19 year old you know exactly what i'm talking about i was the worst one though yeah um <laughs> you're a 19 year old i know everything don't try to help me right so invincible right exactly all right so any this has been awesome ryan good stuff i love your perspective as an agent also as a manager and uh, that you know any i, I love what you said because i say it in a slightly different way anybody who shows up and does it every day it's very hard to fail if you do that. Now, when it gets the most frustrating, stop looking at and you're making mistakes, stop looking at as bad. It means you are steps away from a breakthrough. So don't be afraid to do that. Okay. Totally Keep going agree. in the right direction. You know, you have Ryan as a coach, you have our other managers as a coach. If you're in one of their offices, you have me. My coaching is not currently full right now, almost. But and the reason it's not full is because it's busy and people go, I got this. When the market's really busy, they got it. But if you get coached and you know implement new ways, you can actually do it better. So, Ryan, any final words you want to leave these wonderful people today? Um, just be present. Be there. Be there for. Be there for each other. Be there when you're at work. You know, focus and, and do your thing and and just uh, keep your perspective in life. I think it's easy to get tunnel vision in this industry with so many things being thrown at us at all times. When it comes to you know, just look at your inbox and you have a million things screaming at you. But keep perspective, keep a macro point of view. Don't lose focus on your goals. Um, you know, 
you have you know you have your thirty thousand foot view with real estate, and you're going to be successful at the end of the at the end of the day. I, I totally agree with that, and I love what you said earlier about with your mother. Is every client was an A client, and guys, your fiduciary responsibility plus it's the golden rule. Okay, we'll pay you over and over and over if you maintain that. So, Ryan, thank you very much for your time today. Oh, Ladies thank and you. From the desert of California. Okay. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for your time, Ryan. Appreciate it, everybody. We'll be doing this cool. again, starting again next Tuesday. Thank you. That's cool. not a political ad, by okay. the way, either. All right. Thanks, buddy. <laughs>